Good morning, everyone. Will you please join me in our call to worship? This day is like every other day. Alarm clocks beat, coffee was brewed, weary bodies came to life, and yet this day is like no other day. For the sun rose and we knew it was a miracle. The tomb was empty and we knew it was love. Again and again we say, the longest night is over. Death has lost its sting. Jesus is among us. Alleluia. Amen. Again and again and again. Alleluia. Amen. Since it's been a long time since we've been invited to stand as we are able to sing, I invite you to stand as you are able to sing. I serve a risen Savior, he's in the world today. I know that he is living, whatever others say. I see his hand of mercy, I hear his voice of cheer. And just the time I need him, he's always near. He lives, he lives, Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow way. you to join with me in a word of prayer. There are millions of ways that you speak to us, O oh God, for you are the God of the garden and God of the empty tomb. You speak to us in rituals, both formal and organic. You speak to us in drops of water on foreheads, in vows set at altar, through pieces of bread dipped in ordinary wine, and through shared candlelight services on Christmas Eve. You speak to us in nature, your artistry showing up in starry nights, in the smell of pine and rushing waters in almost every sunrise. You speak to us through our relationships, the comfort of a loved one, the laughter of our friends, the security of those who support us and cheer us on, you speak to us in so many ways, and we are grateful for them all. However, today you have spoken the loudest word. You have spoken the word life. Thanks be to God for life and life eternal and for the giver of all life our beloved Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. A collection of Easter readings. And when the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James, and Salome brought spices, so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, they went to the tomb when the sun had risen. 
And they were saying to one another, Who will roll the stone away from the door of the tomb for us? Just as they arrived, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven, rolled the stone away, and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his raiment white as snow. And for fear of him, the guards shook and trembled and became like dead men. And the women, looking up, saw the stone was rolled back, for it was very large. A reading from John's Gospel. So Mary Magdalene ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to him, to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Peter and the other disciple went toward the tomb. They both ran, but the other disciple out, outran Peter and reached the tomb first and stopped to look in. He saw the linen cloths lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and he went into the tomb, and he saw the linen cloths lying in the napkin which had been on his head, not lying with the linen cloths, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who reached the tomb first also went in, and he saw and believed. For as, for as yet they did not understand the scriptures, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to their homes. Let us pray. On this holy Easter morning, Lord, as we approach the empty tomb and all the promises that its emptiness means, we ask that you fill us with your spirit. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be open and acceptable unto you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. We have been walking in darkness for a long time. And we're still walking in darkness, aren't we? We know that the global pandemic has not yet ended. This thing that has taken from us our routines, our sanctuaries, our friends and family members. And we know that tomorrow the trial resumes of a former police officer who knelt on a man's neck for over nine minutes until he died. And not only is this man on trial, but this country's racism is on trial. And the way we abuse and harm each other is on trial for the world to see. Over the past few weeks, we've seen the pattern once again reemerge of mass shootings. And this week we're in mourning as a nation of the death of one of our Capitol Police officers who died when a man ran through a barricade. And yes, we even are called by God to mourn the man who killed him, who was shot at the scene by police. And so for a long time, our companions have been darkness and isolation and despair. And so reading these sacred texts this morning, we relate to these women as they walk to the empty tomb. For I imagine there's nothing more despairing than to witness the death of God, to see upon the cross this man, this Savior that they loved, broken and murdered. And so they got up early. They bought spices. They made a plan, met, and began their walk towards this tomb which they expected to be occupied. To do the one thing they could think to do to honor this man, this God whom they love. To take care of his body, to show their devotion and their faith. And along the way, someone asked a very important question. Who is going to roll away the stone? I imagine they stopped to talk about that. I don't know why they kept going. If an obstacle like that appeared before us, perhaps we would turn around. After all, what's the point? And even if there was no stone, he's dead anyway. But in that darkness, in that despair, they kept going. 
Perhaps they thought they'd meet someone on the way who could remove the stone. Perhaps they thought that God could at least do this for them, find a way that they could honor Christ's body. And so they carried with them not only their spices, but their hope and their faith and their love for their dead Messiah. Perhaps hoping that God could provide one more miracle and at least give them access to the body. And of course, we know the rest of the story. That it was a slight miracle of God to remove the stone. That the greater miracle was that the tomb was not occupied, but empty. And so as we walk in this darkness, as we continue to journey as people of faith through a world that is so often marked by death and despair and violence and racism, what will we carry with us? What hope and what faith will we carry in our souls as we walk towards the tombs that we expect to be occupied? What miracles do we expect of God Perhaps it's a miracle greater than the one that we can imagine. Amen. Continuing our readings. While the women were perplexed about this, behold, two angels came and stood by them in dazzling apparel. And they were frightened, and as they bowed their faces to the ground, the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid. For I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. Why do you seek the living among the dead? He is not here, for he is risen, as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. When they went in, they did not find the body. The angel continued, Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee that the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified and on the third day rise? And they remembered his words. Now go quickly and tell his disciples that he has risen from the dead. And behold, he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him. Lo, now I have given you my message. So they departed quickly from the tomb with fear, yet filled with great joy, and ran to announce the news to his disciples. And behold, Jesus met them and said, Hail! And they came and looked and took a hold of his feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my disciples to go to Galilee, and there they will see me. Continuing. Now it was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James and the other women with whom announced Jesus' messages to the disciples. But these words seemed to them as idle tale, and they did not believe the women. When the disciples did not believe the announcement given by the women, Mary Magdalene, who had returned to the tomb, stood outside crying. She stooped into the tombs and again saw the two angels in white, sitting where the body of Jesus had lain, one at the head and one at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, Because they have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have put him. Saying this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing, but she didn't know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you crying? For whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him, and I will go and get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni. Jesus said to her, Do not hold me, for I have not yet ascended, but go and find my disciples and tell them, I am returning to our Creator. Mary went to the disciples, and she saw them. And as they mourned and wept, she said, I have seen the Lord. And she told them these things that he had said to her, the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Well, as Jonathan shared, this last year has indeed felt like it's been shrouded in darkness, not only on a 
communal level, but I know in many of your personal journeys, the struggles that you all have confronted and that perhaps you're still in the midst of one of those dark and struggling journeys. In some ways, it felt this last year as though all creation were groaning, wanting to be set free from the darkness, from hurricanes that out outpace the alphabets of two languages, to super tornadoes that tore up miles of livelihoods, to forest fires that burned the West and a snowmageddon in Dallas, Texas. Y'all, snowmageddon was just a month ago. Think about that. Our neighborhood, our two churches, were covered with a white ice that we thought would kill just about everything that was brewing to be born. And indeed, some of our plants are still sticks with dry leaves hanging on with nary a bud in sight. But our friend, Howard Garrett, the dirt doctor, he tells us to wait and to watch. Don't assume something is dead from outward appearances. Keep watch for new life that may be hidden, working in the soil, working its wonder, healing the hurt. That's why I'm so glad that we're here this morning in the garden. <laughs> Just as Mary Magdalene went to the garden and the other women went to the garden and found that her beloved rabbi, her, her friend, was dead and, and, and went to help prepare his body, but found that the body was missing. Now, we've chuckled over the years hearing that story that Adam just told from, from John's perspective that Mary thought he was the gardener at first. But really, was that such a big leap? Isn't Jesus the branch of Jesse, once thought dead and come to life? Isn't he the one whom God sent to tend the garden, to prune away the chaff in order for new life to grow? I am so glad that we are here together, brothers and sisters, in this garden that we share as communities of faith. We who have waited for the signs of life to spring forth again in our world. We are sharing a witness today, this morning, of what God is doing in us and through us after a year of protective isolation. Now, there are some out there who have been proclaiming that the body of Christ is probably going to die because of the pandemic. After a year of not going to church, of not being in buildings, I've heard it several times. I've read it in several journals. The body of Christ is not going to survive this pandemic. You know, there, there is that assumption that it takes a body, a frame, a building in order for life to be. But this is what we learned this year haven't we, church? We all know that Christ didn't need his body to continue to live. And we didn't need our buildings just to survive. Because this past year, the church was given space to grow beyond our walls to uh, for both of our congregations to reach outside of ourselves, to find new ways to reach out. Yes, it was a lot on the internet, web, Zoom, Facebook Live, but new frontiers, friends. And how many lives did we reach because we were out in this new frontier? Christ is risen, but the truth is Christ never died. Christ shows us that life cannot be defeated by death. Christ shows us that evil bows to God's goodness and that light came into the world and darkness could not overcome it. Can I hear an amen? amen. 
Amen. That's what this Easter is all about, friends. It's about the truth that even though we experience and see on our television uh, news shows humanity's death-like vice of violence that still is trying to grasp hold of us, Jesus is rising from the grave to bring us up with him, to fight the good fight of life over death. We have waited to see what chaff is going to be pruned. We have waited around for the divine gardener to work wonders in us to heal the hurt of all humanity. It's been a long hibernation, but here we are. We are rising. We are returning. And Christ is calling us back better than before. Can you see the light? Jesus Christ is risen today. He has risen indeed, and we are rising with him. Thanks be to God. Amen. It is a blessed assurance that we have been given that promise. So I invite you to lift up your voices as we sing of that blessed assurance. And if you, yeah, let's stand again. I mean, it's, it's fun to be able to stand in church again. <laughs> it's the little things, right? And now, friends, as we come to this time where we remember, remember the gift that Christ gave us as a reminder that life wins, love wins, we take this gift and remember those words he shared with his disciples as he prepared them for the dark places that were to come that the way through the strength to persevere would be found in remembering these words. This is my body that I give to you. Take and eat and remember me. 
And then lifting up the cup, he said, this is the cup of the new covenant. As long as you shall drink of this and remember me, I will come and be with you. Let us share together in this time of communion. Little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Jesus loves me, this I know. For the Bible tells me so. Little ones to they are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. now if you'll join me for our benediction. The Gospels tell us that Jesus Christ has risen. He has risen indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to God in the highest. Let us stand and go forth and sing together Amazing Grace. Amen.